dark, historical facts. According to Reddit, number 14. The Cambodian Genocide You could have been killed just for wearing glasses, uh, therefore making you an intellectual. Damn. The prisoners were tortured so badly that they tried to commit suicide in every way possible even by using spoons. The executions used to be like this. The prisoners were put on a straight line and the second prisoner was given an object like a shovel or a hammer with which, with which he had to use to kill the person in front of him. Then the same object was given to the third prisoner and the cycle would repeat until there was nobody alive except for the last prisoner on the line who was then killed by the guards. Since many medics were killed or sent to work as farmers, the local regime used child medics to conduct experiments on the prisoners. They used teenagers with no knowledge of Western medicine to experiment on people without anesthesia. For example, they opened a person's chest just so they could see a heart beating, in my honest opinion. This shit is even worse than Unit 731. It's funny because I think it was today we were seeing that the Biden administration was at the very least trying to make some steps in the direction of um, closing privatized prisons. At least any federally um, operating ones. Yeah, Biden orders end of federally run private prisons. And as with everything, it's never going to be as simple as that. But the sooner we get something official moving, the sooner the ball can get rolling. Because y'all already know it's free, it's free slavery and they getting money. <laughs> but you already know the world has to stay the way that it is. Otherwise, some people might have to uh, figure out new ways to be greedy. I see stories like this and it's like, it's sad because it shows you what, um, in some places, uh, what they will round up people for is really about. Like you commit a crime is one thing, you know, you go somewhere and maybe people feel like, oh, you should be rehabilitated or you should just kind of rot. But imagine just being profiled and having them assume that you maybe know too much just because you're wearing glasses and you're taken to a place where the people who inhabit it pray for death to the point where you're almost glad to get into a line of people where the they're tasked with killing each other pretty crazy number 13 the sad case of otabengo it says uh so otabenga bengay he was a pygmy boy from the congo who was essentially captured and brought to the USA to be displayed in freak shows. I'm sure this was quite normal back then. He had undergone tribal customs such as having his teeth filled in or filed, forgive me, into points before his capture. So it looked like he looked like a monster with like jagged teeth. He eventually got out of the carnivals. You don't have to say it like that. The art of the carnivals would have been fine. And dreamed of returning to Africa during then the then uh, occurring world war. 
making the trip impossible for the foreseeable future. He ended up committing suicide by gunshot. Uh, you know, that we're two for two here, man. Two entries I've read. Two entries full of people wanting to just end it. So here's hoping you're feeling quite the opposite, you know? If anything, as terrible as things may be, and uh, crushing and unfortunately uh, daunting as the obstacles and tasks uh, you're forced to juggle may be, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not on the inside, you know what I mean? Because they think you're too smart and you're certainly not in a carnival because you're a little freak person. You're a freak in a different kind of way. You know what I mean? The type of way that nobody can shame you for. That's just how you get down. A hello to everybody. Damn, yeah, somebody said Mario Party and I didn't even ask the question yet. Pistachio Boy says, I have been loving your Mario Party streams with Dia. Yeah, I should do more of those. Somebody's gonna have those hit the spot, baby. Honeycomb, Pistachio, Linda, Danny. I hope you guys are doing fine. Alante, Ariana. Silhouetted Girl says, hello, Kyle. Hello, DL, everybody. How are you doing? Number 12. The Vipe Home Experiment. Sweden are mostly known as a not very scary country with good and mostly acceptable dental care. Well... Part of how that came to be is this. The Vipe Home Experiments. The Vipe Home Experiments were a series of human experiments where patients of Vipe Home Hospital for the intellectually disabled, oh boy, were fed large amounts of sweets to provoke dental caries. The, experience, the experiments were sponsored both by the sugar industry and the dentist community in an effect to determine whether or not carbohydrates affected the formation of cavities. The experiments provided extensive knowledge about dental teeth or dental health and resulted in enough empirical data to link the intake of sugars to dental caries. However, today they are also considered to have been a violation of the principles of medical ethics carrying out your tests on non-consent it's so easy to do human tasks you just find people willing you can pay people to do it you can pay people and you can trade them the security of knowing hey something happens to your teeth we'll pay for some dentures or what the hell ever oh boy This, the person who initially wrote it says, Hey, you're institutionalized and suffering and powerless. Let's make your teeth rot out of your fucking skull. Whoa, scientific advances. You know, some people are all like, Yes, well, the findings and the, the contribution to our research will outweigh the cost. It's like, okay, we get it. You still test it on freaking people, man. Soylent green looking ass. What are you doing? But that's our government too. You know, they've declassified some scarier stuff. Look, man, we was testing some stuff. They're all dead now anyway. You don't care. Look at this TikTok. And it's true. Hello to Richie Perez. How are you doing? Mm. Richie said he got his girlfriend code. What is that? Like an Animal Crossing thing? Intriguing. You can either put it in the Discord or put it right here. It's not like they gonna be out here hustling for Richie girl friend code. You know what I mean? Especially with they dusty ass islands. The uh, come on. Shut up! I bet her island. Is I'm not talking about his girlfriend. I'm talking about anybody that would see the friend code and then try to be like, hey, what about me? They don't know anything about the cross. About the Feng Shui. Okay. Richie says, I mean, she got a fatty old booty, so maybe. But they don't know that before you told them. You're the one sweetening the deal with the, the size of your lady donk. Look at you out here phantom flexing, bro. Okay. As Kyle may be interested in the size of fat donks and, 
and huge boobs. What does it have to do with the crispness, with the star-itude of your Animal Crossing Island? None can compare to Kyle's unironically named Dia, Big Titty. They forget the name of my island, you know. But I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some uh, reminders in people's. I should go there right now. Hold on, where's my, where's my controller? You're lucky I can't find it as usual, though. Oh, oh it's right here. You should announce you're trying to give away if someone wants it. Oh, please. If anybody's listening to this and wants Audie in Animal Crossing, let me know because I'm about to get rid of her. So, Darkseid says, I arrive around the time Kyle was talking about the guy setting, getting his teeth filled. Oh, my God. He wrote filled, so he confused me, but I said filled the initial time, so it's my fart, my fart. Terrorist world. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Honeycomb says, I wish I still had Nintendo Online still. I'm waiting for my family to get the whole family pan plan, but I'm feeling like I'm not. it's not going to occur. It doesn't even feel worth it right now because Animal Crossing isn't doing anything the way that it needs to. If it had Cap in the game and we could go to each other's island and do little mini games and shit, it'd be dope. But if you got Animal Crossing, there's really no... Man, you know, whatever. Number 11. The January 1945 sinking of the MV Wilhelm Gustloff. It was a German ship carrying fleeing Germans from the Eastern Front to the Western Front via the Baltic Sea. It was sunk by the Soviet Navy shortly after setting sail. The total death toll is unknown, but estimated at over 9,000 since there were so many stowaways. It is the worst maritime disaster ever, several times more than the Titanic. It didn't get nearly the press because they were the enemy, so who cared? The Nazi media certainly didn't report it because they're, they were in the midst of their waning days of the war. And they were already badly losing, so the last thing that they needed were more hits to their already sinking morale. Over 9,000. It's difficult to adequately picture that amount. And then just imagine them being lost at sea. You know what I mean? Fucked up. It's a big ass ship. That's war, huh? Hmm. How long do you do you think Biden will take to make some crazy shit happen? Weren't you talking to me last night about some guy who drove a car through a bunch of stuff? Through people. In Oregon? In Portland, yeah. What what's the point of that? He just he just plowed through five people, carrying them several blocks. One of them died and the other four are like in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Well, as with anything on the internet, you know, there are people out there defending him. So who knows, did, did, has what he stood for come out in the midst of this deciding to drive your car through people stuff? No? You don't remember seeing anything? Hmm? You don't remember seeing anything about, like, what may have motivated him barreling through people? No, no. It's crazy because I don't see any of that on the news like it's not being reported or anything. You know? What if I were to type it in via the search? Oregon. It's rolling down. And I guess relevant is the wrong thing I kind of want the last um, 24 hours <laughs> Oregon Republican Party vaccination why is it like nobody's talking about it if a guy ran down the street maybe even there weren't enough deaths for it to be juicy enough that's messed up. Just one dead. Yeah. 
terrorism not suspected. One person is dead after a vehicle struck several pedestrians during a multiple hit and run scenario. Get this event out here. Five people were transported to the hospital. But because it wasn't suspected as like a um, terrorist thing. So it's just instant Grand Theft Auto somebody kicked into, Dia? And you also want to, like, I, it's terrible to think, but, you know, when you hear it initially, you're wondering, okay, is this at a protest or something? Is this, like, a bunch of people congregating for some issue? And this guy was like, no, I don't believe in it. Number 10, the Radium Girls. In the 1920s, they worked at a watch company, painting the hours on the watches using radium, a radioactive... Jesus, a radioactive element that glows in the dark. They did this with no PPE and weren't told that radium was dangerous. Meanwhile, the chemists had full PPE and worked in a sealed environment. Worse, they were instruct instructed to lick the tip of the brush to make it a very fine point. Some of them would paint their nails or their teeth with it for fun. When they went out at night. Jesus. They would develop cancer whenever the paint touched. And many of them had such decay in their jaws that their mandibles had to be held. <sighs> what the fuck? I'm not even sure I understand this. Many of them had such decay in their jaws that their mandibles had to be held on with bandages. Mandibles? Dia? There's a new movie about the Radium Girls. I didn't know. Let's go see what the name of that movie is. I'm pretty sure that I've seen pictures of that. And it's... It's sad. Because they were trying to bring attention to it. And I think it was like a handful of women who started trying to like bring this to light. And then they unfortunately died before anything could ever be done for them. Alongside the other women that were affected by, by using radium. And like, it's creepy. It's creepy that their own bosses would be like, oh, you know, just put it in your tongue. But it doesn't get any more transparent than, um, you know, that being how business works, where they're aware that this is dangerous. But they didn't care. And remember, before all of this went down early last year, man, one of the funniest things in the world that I thought was, uh, and again, YouTube suppressed the shit out of not just me, but a bunch of people saying the same thing, which was pointing and laughing at the um, attorney general, bringing his bitch ass talking about, oh, masks don't work. Stop buying them. We're like, are you sure? That's a really interesting thing for you to say, Attorney General. You know what I mean? Stop buying the mask. What are you talking about? There are a lot of things you could have said that could have made sense, but this is not one of them. Y'all fucked up and you're in a weird spot, but telling people not to buy the masks, you better phrase that properly. You know what I mean? Holy shit. But yeah, a lot of these managers, a lot of these bosses, they're going to be like, look, y'all go in, son. The school district is like, listen, teachers, y'all go in the school. We sitting on these vaccines and y'all don't need them, man. It's a, it ain't that big a deal. Y'all don't need the vaccines. Y'all don't need the gear. Oh, please. Uh, currently, there's a teacher protest over in Chicago and people of the city are mad at the teachers in Chicago because they don't want to go into work, but they said that they aren't willing to go into it unless they're willing to give them vaccines. <laughs> you already know that there's some Karen moms mad at these teachers because they don't want to spend time being a free nanny for their dirty ass kids. But since, you know, I'm pretty sure that they aren't going to be willing to budge that quickly or anytime soon. There's just going to be a bunch of kids without the ability to go to freaking school, you know? And that's the world we live in, where, where if it costs you a little bit, you don't want to spend that penny. You don't want to do it. 
it's upsetting. Listen, I don't know what kind of disgusting, abhorrent, you know, I mean, yes, it's supposed to be a dark kind of list, but that doesn't mean I want to ever read things like, oh, aren't cheeks supposed to be f kind of flat in my chat? Do you understand? No. Curves are beautiful. Okay? Round, shapely, juicy, delicious curves. Please, please. Don't you come in here trying to normalize the idea that the word cheeks and flat should be together. So there is no harmony with those words. So, so you want Only discord. Okay. So you'd like me more if I had chubbier cheeks? Bro, <sighs> there's a lot of ways that cheeks can be. Chubby is not the, the only way. This is the way. No. As we continue up. We arrive at number nine. Mm. The death of Roger Williamson at the 1973 Dutch Grand Prix. In the 1970s era of Formula One, the cars weren't far off from being an overpriced metal coffin on wheels. Surrounded by highly flammable fuel and during the Dutch Grand Prix, this became painfully obvious indeed. Hey man, I could put a a wheel or three on this rocket right here. We'll put a cockpit on there. I bet you we could trick people into getting in them. I bet you we could. That's how it happened. Yeah. Put a cockpit on that rocket. Some wheels. Look, a smart person wouldn't do it. Hey, Skeeter, I made this here firecracker, but it's like the size... Of a horse, you well, I reckon you could ride that that firecracker, ride it. Well, well, maybe if we had some even terrain and maybe some wheels, but who would be crazy enough to do that? Well, maybe we could make it look like a car. <laughs> Skeeter, I know they're stupid people. Come, come on, man. I reckon we could get somebody to ride it, give them a decent enough pay if something does go wrong, and then charge other people to come watch what's probably inevitable. <laughs> Damn. That may have been the most entrepreneurial thing that, that the white people have ever conceptualized. And they, they've made it too safe now. That's why, that's why all of that racing is, is boring and lame. NASCAR, pff, it'll never be as good as it used to be. It, don't, it only gets less entertaining with time because we get more safe and now you know a dark historical event i'm sorry roger williamson crashed out of a uh what crashed. he crashed out after a tire puncture his car came to the rest upside down which had him trapped inside he was not seriously <laughs> hurt by the crash that reading. listen <laughs> he was not seriously hurt by the crash, but then the fuel tank ignited. <laughs> Shut up. That's high stakes. Can you believe that? <laughs> He's, no, oh no. So, he was not seriously hurt by the crash, but then the fuel tank ignited. <laughs> Stop at that. The fuel tank ignited and the car burst into flames. Another driver named David Purely, but no, maybe it was Pearly, okay. Uh, was he going to go up to the Pearly Gates, Dia? <laughs> From a death. <laughs> I'm sorry. David Pearly. Another driver named David Pearly was behind Williamson when the car crash occurred. He saw the whole crash unfold. Pearly stopped his car on the other side of the track, ran across an active racetrack, and proceeded to try and save Williamson's life. This is where the dark part of it comes in. Depending on your sensibilities, downright outrageous and disgraceful, none of the trackside marshals had any fireproof equipment, which prevented any of them from being able to help Pearlie to right the burning car. They also had a grand total of one, one fire extinguisher behind them, which was incapable of putting out the flames. Additionally, not a single other driver who saw the calamity stopped to help, despite Pearlie's frantic waving to them, 
to try and get anyone to assist in saving Williamson's life. Meanwhile, race control decided not to halt the race despite a flaming wreck being present on the track. It took almost 10 minutes before this point. Williamson had asphyxiated from the smoke of the flames. He choked to death. No oxygen with which to breathe. As soon as the fire was put out, they simply put a blanket over the burned out car and continued racing. Later on, other drivers and race controllers would claim that they assumed Williamson's car was actually Pearlie's and that there was no one at risk at the time because he was outside the car, I'm guessing. They just figured he was safe and it was only the car that was a problem. Something that the many hundreds of people within the grandstands would strongly disagree with. Williamson burned to death, yeah, right in front of the grandstand packed with spectators who all got a front row seat to watching Williamson die before their very eyes. So there you have it, a young promising driver slowly being burnt alive over the course of 10 minutes. A second driver desperately trying in vain to save his life, a group of marshals woefully under equipped for their job, indifferent drivers, incompetent racers or race control, and a disaster which shook Formula One to its core. As a result of this debacle, all it took was somebody dying, you know what I mean? Changes were made to try and avoid this type of event from ever occurring in the future. The biggest change was the mandate that the marshal should wear fireproof clothing, and it was also noted that the drivers were more willing to stop at accident sites to assist in rescuing fellow drivers. Hey, a man could die. Maybe don't worry about the race just one time. Excellent! First place is mine! Like these are these are like Kyle's in a Mario Kart race, Dia. Yeah. Oof. Just watch me burn alive as you drive away. This was the most this was most clearly seen during the 1976 German Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. The Nürburgring in Nordschleif, where Guy Edwards Harold Ur Urkel Brett Lunger and Arturo Merzario all pulled over to assist getting Nicky Lauda out of his burning Ferrari after the infamous crash that took him out of the German, Austrian, and Dutch Grand Prix. Infamous if you say so, bro. We've never heard of any of these names or places in our lives, baby. Because we don't follow this. The Grand Prix. Well, I'm glad that changes have been made. You know, so that these kinds of things don't happen in the future. It's horrifying. Sardonic says, I just found Kyle's abandoned subreddit. A subreddit? Who are you talking about? Like a, like a Kyle page. Light uh, Purple Seraphin says, Kyle, he then received 23 degree burns. Is that a joke from another list that you laughed at, Dia? You really make getting off the bed look like it's like a building that you're you're climbing down. Hmm. Mm. Woo. Well, we did it. We made it through like four whole entries. You know, very timely, very reasonable pace. Can you even believe it? Mm -hmm. Number eight. I'm not sure how dark this is, but most people don't know how bad the pillory punishment actually was. Apparently, my great-grandfather was pilloried for adultery back in the day, and my grandfather once told me that he'd heard about how bad that it was. Delaware didn't abolish the pillory until 1905. Most people think that they just threw tomatoes or maybe brick or, you know, rocks to kill the person. It probably varies by location. But in practice, it wasn't deadly at all. Just horrifyingly gross. Especially in the later years, right before it was abolished. Crowds had become rather sophisticated about making it as bad as possible. What I heard happen to my great-grandfather in this one-hour sentence was, they started by pelting him with rotten eggs. Often a few dozen would be available. Only then do they start pelting you with cow and horse manure, dead animal guts, and then even dog poop. Well, what am I reading? 
The idea is that the rotten eggs would make you really sticky to then everything else. Like you're, you're marinating a human. You're marinating. You're no, no, you're breading a human. You're breading a human by egging them. And instead of putting some breadcrumbs or some panko, some cornstarch on them, some flour, dude, you're hitting them with with animal excrement. And this is the stuff that we need to watch to zhuzh up our lives. You know what I mean? Completely necessary. <sighs> is it the kind of video game you want to be playing? Oklahoma is trying to return its two million dollar stockpile of high hydrochloroquine. Oh yeah, remember when um, Trump was trying to advertise that as the cure for COVID? Uh huh. I don't know why the cheese I spilled in the bottom of my oven watching me bake more stuff instead of cleaning it. Cheese in the oven, dear. You know I was supposed to be trying out uh, cheese that I bought in a can. I know it sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. <coughs> um... This was supposed to be a nacho cheese that I would be using for, you know, chili cheese type dishes or arrangements. And uh, the nacho cheese that I decided to try was in a can, Dia. In a can, can. But you can't. Dia doesn't eat cheese, so she can't enjoy my chili cheese with me's. Chili cheese. I was also thinking of getting really big potatoes and we could like, uh, do you think we could air fry a potato? I think so. But I'm, I have faith in it being able to fuck the outside of it real good, but I feel like we'd need to probably split it open somehow. Yeah, that's how I do it. To get everything. Just, just cook. cut it down, slice it into halves. That's how you do it? Not necessarily, just do slots. Or slits. Hmm. Number seven. The Halifax Explosion. Regarded by many as the biggest man-made explosion prior to the invention of the atomic bomb, a ship laden with explosives collided with another vessel in the Halifax Harbor. The resulting explosion flattened much of the city's downtown core, killing roughly 2,000 and injuring 9,000 people. Jesus Christ, man. There were bombs on a boat and it hit another boat and it flattened a good part of the town to the point where 2,000 were dead after the fact and everybody else was just hobbling around. I remember, I think I remember you reading something about this before. It sucks that it doesn't seem that I have, or we have... Um, footage. That's what we want of everything. And if we don't, why don't we have a representation, you know, a digital representation? My God, can you imagine? That's a fucking, that's a fucking fatal catastrophe, bro. Jesus, hell. Where well, you might as well have been bombed. That's nuts. It's hard to it's hard to conceptualize an explosion that could be out in the damn harbor. It's hard to imagine. True Silver says if you want something similar, look up the Beirut explosion, but I don't consider the Beirut explosion to have come close to this. Am I wrong? You guys would be the ones to be able to tell me if I'm wrong about that. I just didn't know. I didn't think that. Uh, 
And this is going to sound super duper rude, guys. You know what I mean? But it seems like for the most part, the explosion in Beirut was like an explosion. The end, right? Do you want to hear the numbers? What are the numbers? Okay, so it caused 204 deaths, 7,500 injuries. Uh, it's estimated to have done damage of about 15 billion US dollars. So you're talking about you're talking about Beirut. Yes, yes. Now, is the problem with Beirut that there was not a considerable amount of people on deck or and this is a, w a weird way to phrase it to call it a problem. Was the problem that the explosion just wasn't that, you know, incredible? I think it was more so because it was like the the uh, positioning by the Bro, the but water. the weird part is what I am, what my belief is, was that the magnitude of this explosion was so much greater that it might as well have been like an A bomb as far as there being a radius, right? That's what I'm thinking when I think about this, not just because, oh, this killed 9,000 or this killed 2,000 and injured a bunch more. Whereas the Beirut explosion, it barely went up into the hundreds. I don't think it was about people not being around it. I think that this was a much more powerful, like, anime tier explosion. As nerdy as that sounds. But you know what? Beirut explosion radius... The blast caused carnage over a six mile radius. Okay. Halifax explosion radius. What? Every building within a 2.6 or 1.6 mile radius over 12,000 in total was destroyed. Now, the weird thing is, this thing says it's a six-mile radius causing carnage. You know what I mean? But why do I, I genuinely get the feeling that buildings closer than two miles to that explosion in Beirut were fine? Whereas the implication with this one is that, you know, I mean, two miles away almost, they were definitely destroyed. some buildings it must have just been that there weren't enough people around man um, and i guess the buildings now are built better to withstand something like that than you know back in the day you guys are genuinely genuinely throwing in things that make more sense <laughs> than i'd honestly anticipated there is nothing more true than the fact that the buildings must be built much better today. The crazy part was, and this is what I loved around 9-11, is a bunch of niggas jumping on TV and talking about, hey, you know, nobody ever in their fucking wildest dreams had ever imagined that a plane flying into the building is the type of thing that would ever happen. And they were actually, like, the one of the conspiracy uh, videos just goes into all of these times that planes hit buildings and how they were starting to build them. You know, anticipating that shit and the Empire State Building and how, like, that was a thing. What a nightmare. And they even produced, like, some kind of military exercise pamphlet where they had, like, scenarios where a plane would hit a building. It was nuts. But, you know, that was just people speaking out of Bing Bong. Yes. And then having somebody go, oh, really? <laughs> well, how about look at this? When this happened, yeah, a lot more people would have died, but I think it's because of today and the standards of buildings of today that they were just able to withstand the blast a hell of a lot better. Especially since it was a six mile radius. I see you, Terry Shores. So, okay, I guess the Halifax was, was pretty gangster. But wait, are we, say, were, are we agreeing that the, the Beirut was probably worse? Yeah, it was it was worse. Hmm. 
it, as far as the explosion and radius of it, but it didn't kill as many people because many people may have not been near that area. And, and the better buildings. buildings were better built so, by yeah. this time. So everything from back then was made out of like paper or something. Yeah, fuck them old people. Just kidding. <laughs> Number six. Human experimentation by Japanese Unit 731. And they got away with it too, right? Isn't this where they just traded the research? They got pardoned, yeah. Oh, boy. The human experimentation by Japanese Unit 731 during World War II committed primarily against innocent Chinese civilians. Nothing I've ever heard of in my life, including fiction, is darker than the horrors committed by the years, or committed for years by the Unit 731. A military, biological, and chemical weapons research division of the Japanese Imperial Military. There's not even room in a Reddit post to list half of it, but here's a taste. Dissection of living babies, pregnant women, etc. Without anesthesia, usually after they have been deliberately exposed and left to suffer from horrible diseases, chemical and biological warfare, so on. Freezing limbs off of a victim. Horror movie sadistic surgeries involving cutting off of limbs and attaching them to the wrong sides of a victim. You know, just, you know, just in case the other stuff wasn't enough, man. This is a hardcore. Can I get stationed somewhere else, you know? Removing organs and connecting the tubes back together without the organs to see what would happen. Such as running the esophagus straight to the intestines with no stomach in between. Not to mention the fact that the victims were routinely raped and tortured for the sake of rape and torture without even the flimsy excuse of science being conducted. We're talking about thousands upon thousands of victims, usually helpless Chinese civilians, political prisoners, POWs, the homeless, even over the course of the years in huge facilities with thousands of staff committing these atrocities. But the icing on the cake... General MacArthur and the rest of the U.S. government found out about it when they captured Japan. or And they, ca they granted Unit 731 immunity for their war crimes so long as they shared their findings with America and only America. Fuck yeah. Many of the former Unit 731 members even went on to have very successful and profitable futures in Japan after the war. And the beauty of this, Dia, is unfortunately, it, uh... It promotes and encourages debauchery, degeneracy, the type of shit that spits in the eyes of God it's in the way of, like, doing shit, as long as you document what you're doing. Do you get what I'm saying? And, you know and the effects thereafter. And you know what's more screwed up? What? It wasn't American citizens that they were doing this to. It was Chinese. So how dare the U.S. say, you know what, Every, every all the bad things you did to, to the Chinese people, yeah, it's fine. Here. Immunity. How is a country supposed to feel when some other third party comes in and, and lets the bad guy go? Like, how are you supposed to feel... About something like that. The crazy thing is, exactly that is going on right now, where it's like... <sighs> it, it, the only thing that separated us from, you know, walking the walk was this figurative fence. And I'm going to use an analogy of two dogs that are fighting from the other side of a fence. And when you open that gate, they both just stop barking. They both like walk away. You know what I mean? Right now behind the pretense, the, uh, you know, the figurative, what are we going to do? Go to war kind of fence that we have going on. The, the other countries, they do these terrible things. They have these, these even, even by our standards, pretty excessive prisons that it seems like you really don't have to do anything to get thrown into. We got our own shit going on over here where plants are getting people in trouble for the rest of their life, but over there, man, did you did you think the wrong thing? We can't prove it, but you know what? Fuck the rest of your life, prisoner. And we're supposed to see that and go, "Wow, that's that's unacceptable." But 
in the face of all of the insane, crazy, uh, uh, human violations of, you know, anything that would be considered okay, we go over there when we have the power to do something about it, and we pretty much pat them on the back. So... And it's almost like saying, "Hey, we do that same shit over here. We can't be too, we can't be too public about it. You know what I mean? But you know, hey, I see you, and uh, I was, I'm right there with you." And and obviously, it isn't to minimize what the Chinese government has done to other people that live in their country. I just, I don't know. I feel like I would be angered that some other country is pardoning war crimes on our behalf. Well, you know, you know what Disney says. But yeah, China's pretty pretty bad. Well, not not the Chinese people. The Chinese people are kind of, unfortunately, being dragged along. But the government that they have there is horrible. I wasn't sure this, this entry had a beginning. Number five, the New London School Explosion. On top of the afternoon, is that what it says? On the afternoon of March 18th, 1937, the shop teacher at the school in New London, Texas, turned on an electric sander. Unbeknownst to him, there was a massive natural gas leak under the school. The sander sparked, which ignited the gas and caused a massive explosion that killed almost 300 students and teachers. It was absolutely horrific. Mm, now that's what I'm talking about. Hello, Astro Thunder. You did it. Believe in yourself. You know what I mean? It was absolutely horrific. It's it's always schools and explosions. Do you know what I mean? It's killing me. The force of the explosion was so great that a two-ton block of concrete crushed a car parked 200 feet away. This event is actually why natural gas has a smell now. They started adding it after the explosion so that something like this could never happen again. My grandfather was actually one of the survivors of the explosion. He never talked about it, even to his own family. So I don't know anything about it. Not too much, anyway. Until after his death. Towards the end of his life, he suffered from a series of strokes that left him pretty physically incapacitated. So... My dad had given him a voice-activated tape recorder and suggested maybe he could record his memoirs for his grandkids to listen to someday. As it turns out, he did. We have hours and hours of cassette tapes of him telling his stories of life, including a big section of the New London School explosion. For the sake of everyone's privacy, I'll call my grandfather Papa and use an initial for anyone else. Damn, we about to get some accounts, my dude. Some personal grandpa accounts. Oh, damn. Well, let's let the story ring out through time, dear. Do you want okay. some water? No, we good, we good. Have you been drinking water? Hmm? Have you been drinking water? Yeah. Let me see here. Let me just adjust this. Bring it up. We're going to get a personal account, apparently, from the explosions. Papa was in the eighth grade when it happened, in his English class at about 3 p.m. on a Thursday afternoon. At the beginning of class, Papa and his buddy T had been messing around and being loud in the back of the classroom. His teacher, Mrs. M, had enough of their disruptions and made Papa switch seats with another student. He moved into this girl's desk in the front row, and she moved back into his desk in the back of the room. When the school exploded, they were taking a test. Oh man, he just set up that girl to say that she'd die, and that he survived. And if he were sitting where that girl was, oh dear, so spooky. When the school exploded, they were taking a test on the book Ivanhoe. Papa was knocked out, or Papa was knocked out for a short while. When he woke up, he couldn't see anything because the dust was so thick. 
he looked down and saw that his pencil had blown clear through his hand. When the dust cleared, he saw that the whole back of the room was gone. I won't go into the details. Why? Bitch. But there were bodies and parts of bodies everywhere. The students in the front half of the classroom survived. The students in the back half did not. This included Papa's friend T and the little girl who'd been forced to take Papa's desk because of his misbehavior at the beginning of the class. You could say, Dia, his misbehavior saved his life, Dia. Be yourself, kids. Be yourself. Don't let your dream... I'm kidding. If he hadn't been acting up... Hey, do you see what I'm saying? I'm not... I'm just reading it. If he hadn't been acting up, he would have been killed and she would have lived. He carried that guilt of her death until the day that he died. Papa's classroom was on the second floor. There wasn't any way to get to the room other than the open cavity of the explosion. After the few seconds of initial shock wore off... And he and another classmate jumped into action. Get it? Because there was like a... They're probably going to have to literally jump. You know what I'm saying? They were the only kids in the class who hadn't been badly injured. They made a tourniquet out of a sock and a shoelace for a girl with a severe injury to her arm and dug out their teacher who was alive but badly injured. By then, men were running up underneath the hole, so Papa and the other boy lowering the injured... To them, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm very confused. Because I recognize that this is an America. So everybody isn't a fucking moron. Do you get what I'm saying? But wait a goddamn minute, Dia. New London is a place in Texas? Why the fuck would you... You... Anyway, I guess Texas listen, New place. London is a place in Texas, and this happened in Texas. So let me get this straight, okay? What? How old were these guys they know how to tie a tourniquet? You know what I mean? That's not something kids know how to do. What you mean they tied a tourniquet? Whatever, Kyle. It's not the most unbelievable part of the story, okay? <sighs> I just... I just don't know, bro. They lowered the body down. He carried the guilt of her death until the day he died. Then Papa claimed down, claimed, climbed down and ran off to look for his older brother to see if he was okay. As it turned out, B had been supposed to be in geometry class. However, he and his buddy snuck out to go fishing. You could say, Dia, that them deciding to be bastards and play hooky from school saved their life, Dia. Be yourself, Dia. Be who you are, Dia. The explosion happened as they were opening the door to head out to the parking lot. The force of the blast sent them tumbling head over foot across the lot. They were both banged up and dazed, but they survived. The rest of their ge geometry class was killed. Continue. 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 You have the rest of this thing to get through. Now that's what I call geometry wars, do you? You ever heard of geometry wars? Hmm? No, is that a game? Yeah, it's a really popular game. I used to... I used to to play the shit out of that back on 360, do you? You know? Just flying around. It's geometrical as fuck. That would be, that could be a great review to put on the box, this ge geometrical AF. This was back during the summer of arcade, do you? Or maybe even before that, I don't know. Maybe just initial bullshit arcade games, you know what it is. The rest of the geometry class was killed. I don't know that there's a moral in the fact that my grandfather and his brother survived because they were misbehaving that day. I do know 
that it weighed very heavily on both of them for the rest of their lives. There's a lot more to this story about the day and the aftermath, most of it absolutely horrific, but I won't go into all of it here. A few small tidbits though, Papa and the boy who helped him rescue the other student from their classroom were both awarded medals and certificates of valor for their actions that day. I'm very impressed that these boys knew how to t tie a goddamn tourniquet, because the only way that we would know how to do that kind of shit, Dia, is from all of the horrible fucking anime, um, video games, and TV shows that we like to ingest. I don't think either of us would be able to claim that a class would ever equip us with anything more than, put, like, maybe a socialized, uh, um... CPR class because that's important. Oh, if something happens to somebody, you should learn CPR. Like, suck my balls. We don't know any, we don't have any like medical training and not even like, oh, hardcore medical bullshit, but just like even the know how to deal with somebody who may be having a seizure around you. If somebody hit their head and proper, you know, how we're supposed to, it just sucks that that's not typical for pretty much every student is some typical combat medic bullshit. God forbid we'd be in a situation. Where, you know, a car fucking tire causes an accident or something explodes and now people need genuine help. But the fact that nobody knows anything. Imagine if we didn't live in the era where we could instantly pretty much Google everything. And even that's too slow. If you already don't know what to do. You're going to Google it. You're going to make the YouTube video. Okay, okay, listen, how do I save a dude's life? And he's on the ground. Uh, uh. What is up, guys? Thank you for watching my tutorial on how to save a guy's life. But before we get into it, I want to go ahead and plug all of these things and my sponsor. Our sponsor today is MedKits. If you really want to save somebody's life in the future, not now, hopefully, like, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to watch my video and I'm giving you all this bullshit, you should totally get one of these med kits, but click through my link in the description because I have a specific code for this med kit that will give you 5% off at checkout. Use the code wasting your time, bro. Use code wasting your time for 5% off. You know what I'm talking about? And the guy's like, I'm dead. Blech. You know, why? But these kids were better equipped than us, bro. What were they teaching them in Texas? Were they medical students? Because all the math in the world wasn't saving those kids in the geometry class. Only the misbehavior of these boys deciding they were going to go fishing. <sighs> People don't deserve what happens to them. It's a freak world out there. And not the good type of freak like all the girls that listen to these lists. You know? Marie Bacon says maybe he was in the Boy Scouts. <sighs> I can't even think of the Boy Scouts without thinking of like altar boys and how mistreated some of them are because of the terrible, unfortunate, you know, people that they have as leaders within those societies and organizations. And then worse, how we as humanity have had a history of people trying to expose the church and expose these Boy Scouts and all of the corruption and disgusting, degenerate bullshit that's been going on in there. And they've just, you know, made the people who were trying to expose it seem like ass wipes, seem like ass, like liquors and bullshit like this. Just, hey, let's attack their credibility and ruin their career and it's done forever because how dare they have anything to say? You know, people jumping up on TV, shaving their head bald and, you know, grabbing a microphone and going, look at listen, listen, listen to this. I got proof. And people were like, we ain't trying to hear that. You remember when somebody got on TV and they said, this director invited me to a party and he was touching me and shit. And she was like, and some, some reporter bitch was like, do you even know what you're doing to this industry? Do you know? And it's like, bitch, what that got to do with me? Does it change what happened? Oh, this industry makes too much money. You better shut your mouth. You better shut your mouth. And all of that, you know, it's totally believable. It's totally typical because it happens whether or not people want to admit to it when they get caught on it or not. But the saddest and most unfortunate thing that unfortunately sets off like, you know, red flags in my brain because it's abnormal is for me to believe that some kids actually were equipped with something. They were taught something. They learned something they could actually use. That's more shocking within these stories than anything else. And it hurts. 
but it's the reality we live in and hopefully as we grow and we move into the future things will change and things will get better because all we can ever want is for the people that live after us to be better than what we were as opposed to voice nigga because we ain't trying to die and see the world go mad backwards which is not something our parents have a problem with just shut your eyes you know what i mean keep a stiff upper bootstraps so you could pull yourself up by him damn it number four okay where are your bootstraps now hmm bootstraps dear bootstraps 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 If I toss it to you, you just become dependent on it. Waka waka. Huh. Wait, are bootstraps the little loop on the back? Dia? That's what they were this whole time? You got me, man. I don't know. I'm not from them times. Hmm. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Lots of advantages. <laughs> Listen, um, I, uh, I got lost for a while, but I'm back now. You know what I mean? In time for the next entry, number four, the children's blizzard. It occurred in January 1888 on an unreasonably warm day. The weather was, the weather was nice. And many school kids were tricked into not wearing coats or jackets to school, some only in short sleeves. While the kids were in class, the weather outside changed dramatically, from warm and sunny at noon to dark and heavy like a thunderstorm, with heavy winds and visibility at three steps by 3 p.m. Children left school to go home and do their chores, this was Minnesota. They were expected to milk the cows, to do whatever else was involved in the family farm. But they got lost in the darkness. Between the snow and the wind, many of them froze to death in their own town just yards from their houses or other sources of refuge. 235 people, mostly children, frozen to death. What the fuck? You want to know the even weirder part? Apparently, two books have been made with the same name. One is nonfiction, the other is fiction. That's fucked. That is so fucked. 200 kids, they froze to death because they didn't like what? Surely you would think as like a teacher releasing kids to go home if they walk home that you wouldn't let them go into, what you know time, what I mean? What time did it happen? They said by 3 p.m. when they were supposed to go home. 
I don't know, dear. Because the school lets out at around 3, so if around 3, when they're already leaving... It was saying that from the time they w went into school, it had drastically changed to dark and heavy thunderstormy. At noon. Okay. I don't know. I feel like that's negligence on the part of the adults that were letting these little motherfuckers go. Yeah, they should have just called their parents and be like, hey, so come pick your fucking kid up, please. 1888, Dia. That's the problem. Call their parents. You know what I mean? So it's well, like. There you go, you know? No, but still, Dia. They. But still, they you when they you were be fine. They thought they were, look, they were different times and they thought more back. I just hope it's they thought they were going to be fine and not they didn't care because it's over now and I'm not fucking watching your kids. You sending these little motherfuckers out to fend for themselves in the goddamn snow? Holy shit. 200 dia? You have any idea how like it's it's one thing to get lost and wander around for an hour or two. Because you're kids, so you suck. They're not going to make it, like, multiple hours and potentially days like we might. You know what I mean? Also, it wasn't just kids that died that day. Adults did as well. So Which makes me wonder, Dia, was it, was it just seemingly okay when they released all these people? And then over time, it got instantly terrible. Or was it fucking bad when they released those little motherfuckers? It must have been, it must have been... It Three-step visibility is a big fucking deal to allow little motherfuckers to just go, well, you know the way home, bastard. See you later. They should, I feel like it, if it was significantly bad enough, uh, if an adult opened the door and saw like, holy shit, I wouldn't even fault her for not stepping out into it to try to retrieve kids. I would just at the very least expect her to yell and go, whoa, 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 come the fuck back in and we'll stay in here until this clears up. I can't, in good conscience, set you little bastards loose when you can't see the road in front of you. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just be worried about the kids getting lost and then freezing to death or being cold. I'd be terrified of them being snatched the fuck up. People love themselves some kids to kidnap condition and then establish some of that Stockholm syndrome on and have them live in as a... Release it. It's 1888. I'm not saying that I shouldn't, you know, I should be upset because it just happened. Yeah, I'm just saying, damn. You're applying today's logic? Am I? Am I? Yes, can you think yes. kid kidnapping went out of style? Is that what you think? No, I'm talking about the weather and the teachers and stuff. The weather outside was oh, frightful. But the teacher seemed to be okay. delighted in letting these kids back go then, back then they used coke. and get okay. motherfucking frozen the snow. In their own because Listen, don't remind me about how much better the times were back then. Shut up. You wouldn't be trying to do cocaine or meth right now. Yeah, you never know. No. No. If it was socialized as normal, we'd be living different lives. We were yeah. born and weed was legal. We'd be using it on our backs. Right We'd now, be in space. Right now, you'd be on your knees in some dirty-ass hotel to get your next... That is not how it works. You don't know that also. It could be... I don't know. I don't know. You would get addicted either way. You, you would get addicted. 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 Dig Dug. Dig Dug. Hey. Pierce hoping everybody's keeping it perky. You know, massaging themselves. Staying warm in this tragic, cold time. Here's hoping that um, nothing like this happens to you. And if you, if it does, then you use common sense and just abuse whatever structure you can. Because ending up frozen because you can't see where you're going and what's going on, it's not right. You know, I wish you the best. I love you. Number three. The Massacre of Calavrita. It is a village in Greece. The Germans, it's funny that they say Greece because does anybody know what I had for my, uh, for my thumbnail today? Hmm, dear? You don't know what this is? Somebody in the stream chat will tell you after they like the video and click through the link in the description to my wish list. I bet you you won't. Special thanks to Y and K for being incredible and to PB and J. 
and whoever bought that headset that needs to let them know that it didn't come because I'm, I'm worried about it and I'm worried about you and I want you to get your dues. Need to get what you get back, baby. Don't let them do this to you. Calavrita. It's a village in Greece. The Germans entered it and rounded up the male villagers in a field. They then shot all of them with machine guns. After that, they got the children and the women and put them in the church. When everyone was inside, they locked the doors and set fire to the church. Around 20 minutes into the burning, a German soldier couldn't take it anymore and opened the doors. Around half of the people escaped the fire and the rest perished. The German soldier was shot for this. And if you go to Calavrita today, his name is on the memorial. It is sad that no one knows this, as things like this happened all over Greece and Russia and Poland. I only know about this because my great-grandmother was one who escaped the church. This massacre was in retaliation for the villagers supporting the local resistance force, which had recently killed about 10 Nazis. I want you to think about the uh, being descendant of somebody who only barely escaped a mass execution because of the conscience of one man who died for the, the morality that he demonstrated. Shit like that is big talk for like a movie idea, but you only have one life and to think that you are giving your life in sacrifice of this idea, you're sacrificing yourself. Even if ass wipes around you don't believe that and they're going to attack you and they're going to attack where you're coming from, dude, you are giving your life because you know you're on the right side. What kind of Kyle stuff is that, do you? Without him, we wouldn't. We would potentially not have been where we are now, reading the story right now, because he let some of those people live, and they had an effect on the world, whether or not they felt like it or not. They had offspring that are making changes, and the ripples of which we could never properly articulate will be felt potentially long past us. Oh, 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 bro, Nazis suck, bro. Damn. Someone says, I've heard an almost identical story, but set in France. I wonder if it's the same event, and I'm just remembering it. Turns out they did this everywhere. Yeah, I like how this person thinks that it only... They shot all the men, round up the women and the children, put them in a church, and burnt it. Yep. I've heard this kind of thing happen before, but I think it was actually like the wrath of a woman that was married to some guy that they killed. You know what I mean? It was a queen. It was a queen. Are you sure? Is that what we were, maybe we were both listening to the same thing? But like some woman had her had her love killed and she basically like played along with everybody and then killed the shit out of everybody like everybody, Dia. Yeah, I know. I'm aware. Holy fuck. The men rulers are kind of weird and gross. They're cruel. They're degenerate. They want the young wives to fucking take and, and non-consensually just strip of any of their humanity and their choice. But, you know, the women, Dia, they can show you cruelty. You know what I mean? They can show you the, the revenge for having to share the... the the audience, the company of these disgusting men, they can really get back at some people. What you mean you go go hang a dude upside down and saw the dude in half from the butt down, Dia? What you mean? The other way was too fast. Saw the man from the butt down? Cause if you start with the head. You see what I'm talking about? Don't do it, ladies. Number two. In my family's region in Africa, they used to carry out the death penalty by snake bite. Just a snake bite to each ankle, then letting the man spend his remaining time with this family before he died. I thought it sounded sort of humane in a way, 
like a, a like a lethal injection but apparently they said it was one of the most horrific ways that existed just feeling your heart fail because it can't pump the blood that's coagulating and becoming like jelly in your fucking veins that's cool that's how we want to see our our loved ones in their last moments in visual distress yeah wild as hell boy speaking of hell boy Candor says, Google says Epstein. Hmm, well, I'm glad that you guys knew. That's where, uh, that's where the dude was taking some of them young girls for the fancy rich people parties. Young boys too, I'm sure, because, you know, old money likes to get down in a very specific way. It might be Olga of Kiev. Oh, yeah. How would she know her by name? Unless Seraphin is a man. In which case, how would he know her by name? I'm pretty sure that there weren't many queens who were, who were doing something like this. Killing off a whole village because they killed your man. Get to the good part. Hmm. Oh man, they wanted her to come marry some prince too. Uh, one of their like aristocrats. And they sent them all because she's like, oh, I'll pick one of them if you send them all to me. And she killed them all. Yep, she had them uh, stay on their boat, and then she had her people, her servants or whoever, uh, pick them up, put them in a hole, and bury them alive. I feel like we remember reading or watching whatever was uh, telling us about this now. Yep. Buried them all in a hole. Interesting. Fucked up, you know? How do you bury people in a hole fast, Dia? Without excavation equipment. Cause surely I feel like you're throwing you're throwing dirt in a hole. You just try to establish your footing on top of it, right? I think in another one, she had like a sauna type of thing built for other aristocrats. And, and she burned she, them and, alive. And she burned the building with them in it. Um, yeah. And then the last thing I think that she did was tell them, okay, I'll let you guys, you know, I think I'm good now. Just give me all of your doves. Give me all of your freaking birds. And then she sent those birds with little, uh, like, a bu uh, like a bundle of sticks just on fire. And, and it burnt the hole. Yeah. And sent them back home. And then they burnt their, their ex people down. And they all died. You know, they shouldn't have killed the king. She burnt down the city with all the damn birds with fire attached to it some. Well. She liked their legs. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the end. It's a sad shame, but it's like that's how it goes. Oof. Number one, Kuki Kikai or the Chicken Poop Prison. Every list has one. This was in Thailand, used by French forces to hold political prisoners in the Kantaburi region. The long-standing impacts of this much-feared torture are still felt in the region today. There is a Thai saying for those who buck authority that roughly translates to be careful not to get caught in a chicken poop prison. I learned about this prison from my parents who learned about it from theirs. How it worked was there was a small two-story prison. Bottom floor houses the prisoners, and the top floor is basically a huge chicken coop. The graded floor ceiling ensures that the chicken poop falls onto the prisoners below. 
Apparently, even though the maximum sentence in Kukikai was around a week, it was one of the most feared punishments that there was. Thailand? A grated ceiling with a chicken coop? You know it's somebody's fetish and that they're in there, you know, cranking it. Dia. You know it. I'm sure there's always a fetish. Why does Silhouetted Girl say this is way back? Is that what it's taking her? It's taking her way back. This has done something to me and I wasn't prepared for it. A custom Fortnite set. Oh boy. <laughs> I think it's time. We all could use a rest after all of that. Is ba Biden going to take a bite out of uh, Fed private prisons and their free slavery that they got going on? You know, it's really heartwarming to see so much be disrupted. I was foolish enough to not be involved as deeply in stocks as I should have been. But when I look at shit like what's happening with GameStop and Elon Musk shit posting uh, these memes into existence with uh, with the boosting of GameStop's stock, GameStop of all places, dude, it just takes me back to Gangnam Style and how the rest of the world has to pretend that they understand or give a shit about, you know, what is relevant. Because we've decided that it's relevant. You know what I mean? Like, imagine if one if one month all of us decided, Hey, man, let's only watch documentaries about cookies. And, like, the whole <laughs> entertainment industry had to bend to our cookie-watching bullshit. And we sabotaged the industry because they started making nothing but cookie shit. And, of course, we'd get over it. We were like, that was just a joke for that one month. So I don't know why y'all develop so much cookie bullshit. That's crazy. Y'all crazy. Ugh. Do you think everybody dropped what they were doing and tried to make more, more Gangnam style music when they saw how popular it was getting? Yes, and unfortunately the guy who made Gangnam style always felt like he could, and he even said it like in an interview that he could never redo Gangnam style. Have any other song of his Oh please, it was it was never up to him. Don't people understand? Number one. No wait, no, you're not reading it, reading it. This was just a oh, I was just looking through this. How lovely that you have someone who gives a shit after four years. Okay, oh jeez. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right! It's about fucking time and I'm tired of this America. And it's time to get back on the right track. First you stop it with an XO. Then you enshrine it in law. For for-profit prisons create perverse incentive structures that lead to worse outcomes and higher costs for all involved. Except the owners. They get the monies that would otherwise be reduced budgets. <laughs> what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Pay workers? No, bro. You own this prison, and now you have workers for free. Don't you understand? Free workers? What are, what are they going to do? Unionize? I don't think so. They will not ask you for pay. They will not ask you for proper equipment. Bullshit. This, this nonsense. Hey, what, what you teachers? You teachers want to wanna teach from home? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I think I saw like this old school cool shit the other day where it was like 1920s, you know what I mean? And they were like, 
What were they doing, Dia? I think these kids were kind of like huddled around uh, old school radio. And it was like supposed to be remote learning. Damn, who titties are these? D of course she a fine black sister. Dia, that, those are full breasts. You know? Damn, Dia. What happened, you know? Why was it socialized that, you know, yeah, you got to have the B cups. What's going on? You know, I understand that they could use a leg up. Why does mama look a little bit like, um, wait, no, 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 no. It was better than the icon. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Do you recognize that I'm looking for a bunch of kids curled up to the radio or whatever? Yes. Hmm. Damn. She really got the body to rock that suit, Dia. The body, though, Dia. With those birthing hips, Dia. Do you think that you've got a breeding material type body, Dia? Am I supposed to be comparing myself to other girls? No, it's not an other girl comparison. It's just like a do you consider yourself breeding material? No, but why? I consider myself the, the, I guess, the middle of the road, last person you'd pick for a team. I think you're confused, though, because you have to admit what team, you know? There's all different kinds of teams. What's this with Rudy Giuliani? YouTube suspends Giuliani from partner program cutting his ad revenue <laughs> I guess you got to think about all the other people that Trump uh, was associated with now that um, he doesn't have as big a platform to just do whatever it is that he's been doing hey what you calling me you know what hold on dude tell me we weren't just talking oh my god <laughs> this dog understood, Dia. Yeah. If Pokemon were realistic, it's pretty sad when you think about it, Dia. Yeah. They used to be mighty creatures. And one rock hit the planet, Dia. Yeah. And look what happened. We probably wouldn't be looking the way that we look either. Ladies, gentlemen, one day I'll take you on a journey on a magic party ride through YouTube the way that I'd like to. Until then, I want you to stay safe. I'm going to keep building some playlists with which I'll share you the goodness that the internet has to offer. Until then... Don't get into trouble. Linda's like bug snacks. I don't even have bug snacks on the computer in a capacity I can play it well. I do have, um. Hmm. I was gonna show you Animal Crossing, but it genuinely saddens me now. It saddens me now. They took it, dear. They took all of the charm out of Animal Crossing. We'll set some stuff up. But, um... Yeah, keep a lookout. Love you. Talk to you soon. And I actually have another list lined up, so I should probably earlier in the day let you know when I'm planning to do it. So, watch the channel for reminders and notifications love ya later who changed the uh, default picture to velma jinkies